Uh, for being here, those who are here. Thanks to the, as well to those who are joining us online. So I should have a couple of quick announcements. The first is to uh, say thank you to those who made the veterans meal last week happen. Um, so I was actually away. I wasn't able to be here. But um, what I know is it happened and the church is back to being a church. And so I'm grateful to all the people who made both of those things happen. Uh, looking ahead, today we have Church Without Walls. On Tuesday we have our um, our discussion group. This is a Zoom thing at 4.15 where we'll be talking about um, the next chapter in our Richard Rohr book. And Wednesday we have dominoes. We've got a handful of things coming up. Uh, but that's about it for me. Other things to say before we begin? <coughs> our service will begin in just a moment. Please turn in your dark blue hymnals to number seven. Seven in your dark blue hymnals. We'll sing verses one and two. Thank you. Our service this morning continues on the screen, and it begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Again, that's page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed, and blessed be, be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And let us pray together the Colic for Purity, I think also on the screen and at the bottom of 355. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue now with the praise song. Please turn in your bright blue St. David's song books to number 101. 101.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the contemporary version of the collect. That's on the insert. On the uh, on contemporary version of the collect on the insert. And again, let us pray together. O oh God, who on this holy mount revealed to chosen witnesses your well-beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured in raiment white and glistening, mercifully grant that we, being delivered from the disquietude of this world, may by faith behold the King in his beauty, who with you, O Father, and you, O Holy Spirit, lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the uh, book of Exodus, beginning with the 34th verse, chapter 29. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, he did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would remove the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put on the veil on his face again until he went in to speak to them. The word of the Lord. Be to God. The appointed psalm is 99, and let us res uh, res respond by a half verse. The Lord is king, let the people tremble. He, he is enthroned upon the cherubim, let, let the, the earth, earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion, he, he is, is high, high above, above all peoples. peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He, he is, is the Holy One. One. Almighty King, lover of justice, you have established the equity. You, you have, have executed, executed justice, justice and righteousness, and righteousness in Jacob. Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He, he is, is the, the Holy, Holy One. One. Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They, they called, called upon, upon the Lord, Lord and he answered, answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They, they kept, kept his, his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. O Lord, our God, you answered them indeed. You, you were a God who forgave them, them yet, yet punished, punished them for, for their, their evil deeds. Proclaim. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the, For the Lord, Lord our God is the, the Holy Lord. One. Our second reading is from 2 Peter, beginning in the first verse, uh, first chapter, verse 13. I think it right, as long as I am in this body, to refresh your memory, since I know that my death will come soon, as indeed our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will make every effort so that after my departure, you may be able at any time to recall these things. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, 
with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic ma message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation because no prophecy ever came by human will. But men and women, moved by the Holy Spirit, spoke from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Now about eight days after Jesus had foretold his death and resurrection, <clears throat> Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep. But since they had stayed awake, they saw Jesus' glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While Peter was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. So may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. I don't know if you caught it, but all three of the readings talk about hearing the voice of God. So keep that in the back of your minds. Today we celebrate the Transfiguration. But I need to start off by saying, here we are once again. Do you see a pattern here? The Transfiguration. Father Harvey sits in the front row while I get to explain the transfiguration. He's done the same on Trinity Sunday and a couple others that I can't remember, but whatever. The transfiguration is listed as a holy day in the Episcopal Church and it's celebrated every year on August the 6th. And the incident that Father Harvey just read takes place on a mountain on Mount Tabor, and the cloud symbolizes the presence of God. Moses and Elijah appear, and they stand before Jesus. And they symbolize that 
Jesus is their successor. Jesus is bringing a new covenant from God to the people. But rather than dissecting the meaning of the transfiguration, because I'm a coward, um, I thought we would focus on something a little simpler, easier to understand, and something we could relate to. So I wanted to focus on Peter. Peter was there at that mountaintop, and I find Peter to be a pretty interesting guy, because as imperfect as he was, he became the first Christian leader slash the first pope of Christianity. And I have to throw this shot in also that says, I also scratch my head when they say today that Peter's successors are infallible. Peter wasn't perfect. One of his issues was that he spoke first and listened second. In the Gospels, he's overconfident, loud-mouthed, and he cannot contain himself. His ego needs an audience for his unsolicited opinions. It has been said that Peter suffers from foot-and-mouth syndrome. <laughs> but just to complete the story of Peter, he was executed by the Roman Emperor Nero for his faith. And when he was executed, he was crucified upside down at his own request because he did not feel worthy of dying in the same way that Jesus died. And to just give you a little bit more reminder of who Peter was, he was the guy that walked on water, but when he saw Jesus, he panicked and sank. And then there was when Jesus said to Peter, he said, this very night, you, before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter said, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. Well, we all know the rest of the story. Peter denied Jesus three times. But then we go the other way. Right after the death of Jesus, Peter became filled with the Holy Spirit. And in front of a very large crowd in Jerusalem, he talked about how Jesus was the Messiah. So there was the bold Peter, and there was the not-so-bold Peter. And I can relate to Peter, and I can think of many times that I have spoken first and listened to others and to God second. Let me give you a couple of Perry speaking first stories. First one. I was walking into a convenience store years ago, and as I was walking in, there was this little dog tied up to a pole as I was walking in. It was, probably, it was maybe like a chihuahua or something. And this dog was barking like crazy, barking at me, you know, pulling, wants to get at me, wants to rip my face off. And the dog just keeps barking. Well, I go in, I go in the store, I get what I need, and I go up to the counter, I knew the person behind the counter, and I start telling him my opinion of this dog. So I boastfully am, you know, look at that little rug rat out there, it's, it's, it's ugly, it's, it's got Napoleon syndrome, it's, it's everything. I'm just ragging on this dog. And the, as I'm talking, I'm watching the, the guy I know going, like this, making a gesture with his face. I didn't think any, I'm caught up in my, my drama. And all of a sudden, uh, I get a tap on my shoulder. And it's this little old lady. And she said, excuse me, but that's my dog. And I just went, oh. So I felt terrible. Of course I apologized, but the damage was done. Then there was the time Laney and I were traveling, and we were in Boston at the Logan Airport. And I was the big shot that knew everything about flying and traveling, and um, kind of telling her what to do and what not to do in the big airport, and everybody's out to get you, and everything. Well, the place was crowded. And 
I hear some guy yelling and screaming. Then all of a sudden, some guy goes by me, and he brushes my arm. Brushes. And he's yelling and screaming. And I act like I just got run over, and, you know, like this, and he, and I, I yelled something to him. I don't remember what I yelled. Um, it slips my mind. But anyway, um, so I yell at him, and he keeps running, and he's screaming. So my wife says to me, she says, she starts scolding me. And she says, why did you do that? Why did you do that? And I said, did you see that? This guy came running down, he's screaming like a maniac. He runs into me, he almost knocks me over. He brushed me. <laughs> she said, yeah, I saw it. She said, did you hear him screaming? And I said, yeah, I heard him. She said, then why did you act like that? when he was running and yelling and telling everybody, please excuse me, my wife's going to have a baby. <laughs> so, I'd like to blame that on my hearing, my lack of hearing aid batteries, but to tell you the truth, I often speak like Peter before listening. He's real, he's authentic. Not only does Peter fail repeatedly, but he did it with splendid style. I, on the other hand, am not that way. Like it or not, few people hold credibility who haven't suffered embracement and failure. Peter is a man that we can trust with our struggles because we know his. We walk with him as he walked with Jesus. We watch him rebuke Jesus and even deny that he knows him. Peter wasn't good at listening. His motto, talk first, listen, and ask questions later, it does not work. And this gospel reading shows Peter yet again on the wrong side of eagerness to speak. The story says, Jesus took Peter, James, and John to the mountain to pray. And I think that's a symbolic journey of listening. It takes work. We have to climb and grow. And if you've ever climbed a mountain, you know that that can be challenging. No wonder that when Peter, James, and John got to the top of that mountain, that their eyes were heavy and they all fell asleep. But while they slept, the gospel writer says that something wonderful happened. It was a defining moment, a moment where God the Father grandly appeared in the form of a cloud. And those three followers heard the voice of God. Think about that. That Peter, James, and John heard the voice of God. They're climbing a mountain, and now they hear the voice of God. A complete surprise. There's no way they were ready for that. My question is, I wonder if we're prepared for God to take us by surprise if we only listen. Peter thought that he had Jesus all figured out, but he was wrong. Peter couldn't help himself. It was in his DNA to speak first and ask questions later. And I too must confess that this past week, I was looking in the wrong direction. I wanted to understand this transfiguration thing. But I wanted to understand it in my brain, not in my heart. And I, like Peter, was not listening for the voice of God. So I went through all of my books downstairs. I hit the internet and Googled everything I could think of to see what the scholars have to say about the transfiguration. And I reached a conclusion. Peter and I are in good company because I don't think the scholars know anything about it either. Some say that it served as proof that Jesus was God incarnate. Others say that the writer of Luke made a point that Jesus is supposed to supersede Moses and Elijah. So Jesus was a fulfillment 
of the Jewish prophecies. I believe them both to be correct. But the transfiguration still evades perfect interpretation. Maybe, with any luck, next year on August 6th, Father Harvey will give us that interpretation. <laughs> My suspicion is it's probably a call to spirituality instead of an understanding. And that's what I came to when I was thinking on this. Think spiritually, not mentally. Regardless, I do understand why Peter wanted to put up tents. His heart was in the right place, and it's important for all of us to remember our history, making our experiences of the divine very important. But again, Peter talked too much. His eyes were focused on the literal, not the spiritual. He wanted something that he could see and touch. He tried to use his hands and mouth instead of his ears, instead of his heart, instead of his inner spirit. Sometimes we too get lost using our hands for God, getting so caught up in activities that we do not use our ears to listen for God. Peter needed stability, a tent, a shrine. He wanted something to occupy his hands so he didn't have to use his ears. Sometimes we too can be familiar with that idea. It's easy to say that we should build dynamic programs, that we should raise a lot of money which are often fun and often needed. But what if we said we will demand less of ourselves and sit quietly and listen for what God has to say to us? Because a lot of times when my hands get busy for God, I often miss God's voice. But when we listen for God, when we truly listen, when we hear God's voice through Scripture, through talking with each other, through the many blessings that we have in life, and yes, through prayer, we will know what God wants of us and how to respond in this world. So take some time each day, maybe while you're having your morning coffee, when you're driving to work, when you're going to the store or to the doctor's office. Listen for God's voice. Listen. He is still speaking, just like he spoke to Peter, James, and John. Jesus is not dead. He is alive and he's still speaking. But we must listen for his voice. Sit on your hands, quiet your mind, shut off your cell phone, listen for God, because he is speaking to you. Amen. Amen. Now please stand as you're able, and let's affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which you should find on the screen, and also on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We, we continue now with the prayers of the people. The prayers of the people are Form 5, found on page 389. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our diocese from the um, Anglican cycle of prayer. For Michael our presiding bishop, for Doug, our own bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. We pray for those on our diocesan cycle of prayer. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among the nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We, today we pray especially uh, for those on our diocesan cycle of prayer. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from the hardness of heart and show forth your great glory in all we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. We pray for all on our parish prayer cycle. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, being freed from anxiety, that they may live in joy, peace, and health, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray and give thanks to you, O Lord. We also pray and give thanks for those that have uh, on, honored us with flowers and candles in whom they have been given for all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever blessed Virgin Mary, blessed David and all the saints, 
Let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, Lord, Lord our God. God. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 Please stand as you're able for the peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another. Peace to Jeff. Peace to Lois. Peace to Linda. Megan. Peace to way back at the corner. Peace. Peace to Gianna McKenzie. Peace. Peace. Peace to the choir. Peace to Dominic. And after you've had a chance to greet folks to your satisfaction, have a seat while Terry sets the table. Please turn in your dark blue hymnals to number Before we turn to the great Thanksgiving, I know we've got a few birthdays to pray for. So let's see. We've got uh, from the earlier service uh, the Litchfield son, Scott, 
And uh, Terry might have to help me out here. Bev's, Bev's granddaughters who are both turning two. And then there's one more. Uh, at this moment, I'm forgetting it. And I've heard that it was recently Tony's, uh, Anthony's birthday. So, and are there any other birthdays to pray for? And Valerie? And for Valerie's birthday? Others? So let us uh, please join me in the birthday prayer, which, uh, which may be on the screen, which is on page 830 in the Book of Common Prayer. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which pathless understanding, Abide all the days of their lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's also Madeline's birthday. She's turning 19. That's Helene's granddaughter, Alicia's daughter. So how about anniversaries? Any anniversaries to pray over this week? Then we continue with the Great Thanksgiving, and we're using a form from the New Zealand Prayer Book, which I think is on the screen. The Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right to offer thanks and praise. praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. Even though we turn from you again and again, you call us to yourself and in every age promise liberation. From your own being, you sent Jesus among us, incarnate of the Holy Spirit and born of Mary, our sister. In him, you have made us a holy people by sending upon us your holy and life-giving spirit who came with signs from heaven to lead your church into all truth in the power of the Spirit, and made ready with the Spirit's gifts, we take the joy of the gospel into all the world. Now we join hands around your table, and with all creation, we sing your praise for your unending love. sit as you are able. To you indeed be glory, almighty God, because on the night before he died, your son Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me.
Therefore, loving God, recalling now Christ's death and resurrection and glorious ascension, we ask you to accept this, our sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit, burning as a flame, gentle as a dove, upon us and upon our celebration, that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love, through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
now please stand as you're able for the post-communion prayer. That's on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer, also on the screen. Let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Please turn in your dark blue hymnals to number 137. 137. And we're going to start with verse 3. Verse 3 on... Thank you. 